Okay, I'd like to finish up section 6.4 now, and uh, which is going to be the rest of what we'll do in the course. Um, we're talking about solving systems using matrices. Uh, the Gaussian elimination method is, you know, fancy words for matrices. And when you solve a system using matrices, the idea is to get the augmented matrix into row echelon form by using your row operations. I talked about row echelon form. Uh, in the last video and then also our row operations that we're allowed to use. So let me show you some examples now of where we're solving systems by using matrices. Here's one example I want to solve this system. Well if I'm using matrices of course the first thing that I would need is an augmented matrix. Uh, so I've got uh, two equations therefore I'm going to have two rows. Um, in the first equation I've got a, a 2 in front of x, a 5 in front of y, and then a 5 in the coefficient column. In the second equation, I've got uh, a 1 in front of x, a negative 4 in front of y, and then a 9 in the coefficient column. Make sure that you have the vertical bar drawn. That's part of the notation that we use in representing an augmented matrix. If we didn't have that, then we're using what's called the coefficient matrix, which doesn't have any direct connection to systems. And so we, you know, we, we want that bar to be included. Uh, the bar represents the equal signs. Okay, now... I have to get this matrix into row echelon form, which just means that I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get this into a form where I've got ones down the diagonal and then zero in the lower triangular part. Now, there is a strategy with this in that you want to get the columns set. Okay, get column one set, then get column two set, then get column three set, you know, etc. cetera. Okay, um, so step one always is going to get a 1 in the upper left-hand corner of the matrix. Well, one of my row operations says that I can switch any two rows. So if I just switch rows 1 and 2, I'll have a 1 in front of the, uh, in the upper left-hand corner of the matrix. Okay, now another option that I could get a 1 is I could multiply row 1 by 1 half. That would be fine, although then you've introduced fractions early on in the problem and you know, if we could avoid fractions, uh, that's, you know, that, that, that's ideal, okay? Sometimes you're, you, you have to work with them, but if you could avoid them, you know, let, of course, uh, try to avoid them. Now, right below this one, I need a zero, okay? Because then we get, get column one set. Uh, right now, it's a two. So I need to get a new row two by getting this two to be a zero, if I were to take negative 2 times row 1 plus row 2, then this 2 will turn into a 0, what I'm looking for. Okay, and I've, it's typical to indicate the row opera, operation that you're using um, above the transition arrow. That way, when you flip back in your notes, you can see, okay, that's how I got from this step to this other step here. I'm using this row operation, okay? Uh, so I would encourage you to write that operation down, you know, so that so that you under, uh, see what you're doing there. Uh, row one is going to stay as is, okay. And like I said, I'm going to get a new row two. I need to take negative two times row one plus row two. So let me do that now. Negative two times one is negative two, plus two is zero. Uh, the next column, negative two times negative four is eight, plus five is thirteen. And then over here, negative 2 times 9 is negative 18, plus 5 is, thir is negative 13. Um, column 1 is now set. Okay, the next thing that I need to do is I need to uh, change this 13 so that it's a 1. Again, I'm trying to get 1s down the diagonal here. Well, uh, I'll need to get a new row 2 then. And to make this 13 become a 1, uh, I could just simply multiply all the numbers in row 2 by 1 over 13. Uh, so row 1 is going to stay as is. <clears throat> and row 2, like I said, you're going to multiply all these numbers here by 1 over 13. 0 times anything is 0. 13 times 1 over 13 is 1. And negative 13 times 1 over 13 is negative 1. Okay. So now I'm in row echelon form. I've got ones down the diagonal and zero in the lower triangular part. Whenever you're in row echelon form and you convert back to a system, you'll either know one of the variables or you'll know the answer. Okay. Um, so 
uh, I've now rewritten this augmented matrix back as a system. I've got a, a 1 in front of x, a negative 4 in front of y. This would be x minus 4, y equal 9 for the top equation. The second equation, y equal negative 1. Okay, so I know that y is negative 1. Knowing that y is negative 1 means that I could get x by plugging negative 1 into this top equation here. Uh, so I've done that. And if I subtract 4 from both sides, x would be 5. So I think that the solution to this system would be x equal 5 and y equal negative 1. Uh, I could check that. x is 5 and y is negative 1. Uh, let's see, is 10 minus 5, 5? Yes, that's true. And also is 5 minus negative 4, 9. Yeah, 5 plus 4 is 9. That's also true. Okay, so uh, x equal 5, y equal negative 1 would be the solution. Now, um, t we, we did a lot of things with 2 by 2 systems in section 6.1, okay, and I, I talked about the other methods for solving. Now, if you're not told the method um, and you got a 2 by 2, usually most people would probably use either uh, substitution or elimination, okay, like that would be the, you know, the preferred options. Matrices is fine, but, you know, it, most people probably wouldn't go to that if it's a 2 by 2. Um, now, if you have a 3x3 three three or bigger system, matrices, in my opinion, is going to be your best option. Okay, so I think uh, to kind of finish off this section, why don't we look at some 3x3 three three systems. I'm not going to give you more than a bigger than a 3x3 three three on an assignment. To me, I, I think if you got the idea with a 3x3, three three, you've got the idea. Okay, but of course you can go bigger than that, you know, there's a couple of problems in the book where there's like a four by four or something like that. Um, so here's another example. I'm going to solve this system uh, using matrices. Okay, I've got my augmented matrix uh, coming from this system here. And again, I'm going to try to get this into row echelon form. So I need ones down the diagonal and then zeros in the lower triangular part. Um, Step one, again, is always to get a one in the upper left-hand corner. Right now I've got a two. So if I were to switch rows one and two, I'll have a one in the upper left-hand corner. Um, now the next thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to, get, I'm going to get column one set, and I'm going to kind of do like a two steps in one type deal here. I'm going to get a new row two and a new row three. I need this two to be a zero, and I need this three to be a zero. So to get this 2 to be a 0, if I take negative 2 times row 1 and then add that to row 2, I'll get a 0 here leading off. To get this 3 to become a 0, I would want to take negative 3 times row 1 plus row 3. That would give me this 0 here. Okay, so I've got those row operations written. And let me go ahead and perform those now. Row 1 is going to stay as is. Okay. Um, and uh, we're going to get a new row 2 and a new row 3. The new row 2 is going to be found by taking negative 2 times row 1 plus row 2. So negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, plus 2 is 0. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, plus 2 is 0. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, plus 0 is negative 2. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, plus 6 is 4. Uh, now let's get our new row 3. I need to take negative 3 times row 1 plus row 3. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3, plus 3 is 0. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3, plus 4 is 1. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3, My, plus negative 1 is negative 4, and then negative 3 times 1 is negative 3, plus 13 is 10. Column 1 is now set. The next thing that you want to do is move on to column 2, and we're going to want a 1 to be in the middle of the matrix. Right now it's a 0, but I've got a 1 right below that, right? So if I were to switch rows 2 and 3, I'll have a 1 in the middle. Now in switching rows 2 and 3, it conveniently works out so that I've got a 0 written right below that 1. Of course, if I didn't have that, that would be the next thing to do is to get a 0 below that 1. I've already got that, so column 2 conveniently is also now already set for me. The next thing that I want to do is I need to get uh, a 1 uh, in this spot. Okay, so I'll need to get a new row 3. 
um, this negative 2 needs to become a 1. Well, if I were to multiply row 3 by negative 1 half on all these numbers, I'll have a, you know, this number turn into a 1 here. 0 times anything is 0, right? Uh, so those first two numbers will be 0 there in row 3. Uh, negative 2 times negative 1 half is 1. 4 times negative 1 half is negative 2. Okay, now at this point, I'm in row echelon form. I see there's 1s down the diagonal and zeros in the lower triangular part. Uh, so let me convert back to a system. Okay, I'll have uh, x plus y plus z equals 1 from that top row. y minus 4 is z equal 10 from that second row. And then z equal negative 2 from the third row. Well, knowing that z equal negative 2 means that now I can, can uh, work backwards. So if z is negative 2, and I plug that in here, y plus 8 equal 10 means that y would be 2. And then if y is 2 and z is negative 2, in this uh, first equation, you'll have x equal 1. So I think x is 1, y is 2, and z is negative 2. Uh, if I were to quick check that, uh, is it true that uh, 2 plus 4 is 6? Yes. Is it also true that 1 uh, plus 2 minus 2 is 1? Yes. And is it also true that 3 plus 8, that's 11, minus negative 2, that's 13, that looks good. Okay, so all three of these equations would be satisfied. And so x equal 1, y equal 2, z equal negative 2 would be the uh, answer. Now, by the way, the reason why I would say that matrices is going to be your best option for a 3 by 3 or bigger system is because now in section 6.3, when we had been doing things with 3 by 3 systems, uh, the plan there was to use the elimination method repeatedly. That's an okay method, but this is going to be a faster method because you're just using the coefficients rather than writing down equations all the time in using the elimination method. Okay, so in general, I think, you know, matrices is going to be a faster option. If it's a 3x3 three three or bigger, um, you'd, you'd, you'd kind of tend to want to go with that. Uh, here's another example. Okay, solve the system using matrices. Uh, I've got my augmented matrix written. And again, I'll want to get this into row echelon form. I need 1s down the diagonal and zeros in the lower triangular part. Um, Step one is to get a one in the upper left-hand corner. Uh, I've already got that, okay? Now, right below that one, I'll need zeros, okay? So kind of like what I did up here uh, in this problem, let me do kind of like a two steps in one type deal um, to get a, a new row two and a new row three. I need this two to become a zero and this one to become a zero. Well, for this two to become a zero, I would want to take negative two times row one plus row 2. To get this 1 to be a 0, I'll take negative 1 times row 1 plus row 3. All right, now row 1 is going to stay as is. Let's get our new row 2. Again, I'm taking negative 2 times row 1 plus row 2. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, plus 2 is 0. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, minus 1 is negative 3. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, minus 1 is negative 3, negative 2 times 6 is negative 12, plus 3 is negative 9. Uh, then my new row 3, I need to take negative 1 times row 1 plus row 3. Let me do that. Okay, negative 1 times 1 is negative 1, plus 1 is 0. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1, plus 2 is 1. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1, plus 2 is 1, and negative 1 times 6 is negative 6, plus 0 is negative 6. Uh, so column 1 is now set for me. Okay, now the next thing that I'd want to do is to get a 1 in the middle of the matrix. Uh, well, if I were to switch rows 2 and 3, I see this 1 right here, then I'll have my 1 in the middle of the matrix. Right below this 1, I would need a 0. Right now it's a negative 3, so I'll need to get a new row 3 on the next part of this. Now, also in getting a new row 3, I don't want to disturb anything from column 1. Column 1 is set. My only option here is to work with row 2 and row 3. If I were to take 3 times row 2 
plus row 3, I'll have this negative 3 become a 0, and I'll also keep this 0 leading off. You see, if I were to do anything with row 1 in this, which I don't want to do, I'll change this 0 here to make it some other number, and that's going to mess it all up. Uh, so here's going to be my new matrix. Rows 1 and 2 are going to stay as, as they were. Okay, we're taking 3 times row 2 plus row 3. 0 plus 0 is 0. 3 times 1 is 3. Minus 3 is 0. 3 times 1 is 3. Minus 3 is 0. 3 times negative 6 is negative 27. Uh, or excuse me, negative 18. Minus 9 is negative 27. And now at this point... Okay, if I were to convert back to a system, my third equation would be 0 equal negative 27. That's not true, of course. And any time you've eliminated a variable and you're getting something that's not true, you're going to have an inconsistent system. All right, so there are no solutions to this system here. Here's my, uh, my last example. Okay, uh, again, I want to solve the system using matrices. Okay, here's my augmented matrix representing the system. And uh, I need to begin by getting a 1 in the upper left-hand corner. Right now it's a 6. I've got a couple of options that I could consider here to get this to be a 1. Uh, I think your best option would be to take row 1 and then add negative 1 times row 3. Or if you take row 1 minus row 3, that's the same thing. 6 minus 5 will get me that 1 that I need there. Another option is you could multiply row 1 by 1 sixth. You could do that, but now you're working with fractions right off the bat. And, it, you know, as I said earlier, if you can avoid fractions, like, that'd be, that'd be ideal. Uh, so let's take row 1 minus row 3. Okay, 6 minus 5 is 1. Negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. And then 4 minus 3 is 1. So I've got my 1 in the upper left-hand corner. Right below that, I'll need uh, zeros here for column 1. Now, I feel like a lot of what we're doing is just basic addition and multiplication, right? But it's, it's easy to, you know, uh, add wrong or multiply something wrong, okay? Um, so you want to you wanna be careful with it, okay? But, uh, you know, keep in mind, that's really all we're doing here is we're adding numbers and, you know, multiplying uh, occasionally. Uh, now... I need this negative 12 to be a 0, and I need this 5 to be a 0. I'm going to do two steps in one. Okay, uh, to get this negative 12 to be a 0, I'm going to take 12 times row 1 plus row 2. Uh, so let's do that. 12 times 1 is 12, minus 12 is 0. 12 times negative 2 is negative 24, plus 2 is negative 22. 12 times 0 is 0, plus 2 is 2. 12 times 1 is 12, minus 8 is 4. Also, I need this 5 to be a 0. So I'm going to need a new row 3. If I take negative 5 times row 1 plus row 3, I'll get the 0 there. Um, and so let me do that now. Okay, negative 5 times 1 is negative 5, plus 5 is 0. Negative 5 times negative 2 is 10, plus 1 is 11. Negative 5 times 0 is 0. Minus 1 is negative 1. Negative 5 times 1 is negative 5. Plus 3 is negative 2. Okay, column 1 is now set. And the next thing would be to get a 1 in the middle of the matrix here. Right now it's a negative 22. Um, if we were to multiply row 2 by negative 1 over 22, uh, we'll get that 1 there that we need. So let me go ahead and do that. 0 times anything is 0. Um, negative 22 times negative 1 over 22 would be 1. And then 2 times negative 1 over 22, that would be negative 1 over 11 when you simplify. And then 4 times negative 1 over 22, that would be negative 2 over 11 if you simplify. Of course, you'll want to simplify these numbers as you go along like you'd do any other math problem. Okay, and uh, the next thing then, below this 1 in the middle, I'll need a 0. Right now it's 11. And so I'll need to change row 3. Okay, uh, I don't want to do anything with row 1, right, because I want to keep this 0 as is. 
Uh, if we take negative 11 times row 2 plus row 3, uh, we'll get our 0 here, and we'll also keep the 0 leading off. Uh, let's do that now. 0 plus 0 is 0. Negative 11 times 1 is negative 11, plus 11 is 0. Negative 11 times negative 1 over 11 is 1, minus 1 is 0. Negative 11 times negative 2 over 11 would be 2, minus 2 is 0. Okay, I've got a row of all zeros that has to go at the bottom of the matrix that's already there. And if I were to convert this matrix back into a system, of course, the bottom equation would be 0 equals 0. Uh, that's a true statement, right? So uh, unlike what we were getting over here. And uh, at this point, I can know that I've got a dependent system then. Okay. Uh, my answer written as an ordered triplet all in terms of z would be what you see here. Um, and uh, let's see here. So uh, here would be the other equations the, the row 1 written as an equation. Here's row 2 written as an equation. Um, so uh, let's see here. If I were to take uh, this second equation, y minus 1 11 z equal negative 2 11 and add 1 11 z to both sides, uh, in the y coordinate spot, that's how I'm getting the 1 11 z minus 2 11 And then knowing what y is in terms of z means I can replace that here. Uh, in this uh, uh, top equation, and um, and then uh, solve for x. Uh, so I'm I'm doing that, and I'm getting x to be two eleven z plus seven eleven, and that's going to go in the x coordinate position here. So this would be a way to describe that there's infinitely many solutions to the system. Okay. Uh, we are now done with the course. Uh, we're, we're done with section 6.4, so your last homework assignment is on page 553. Be sure to look at those.